Welcome back Guardians. Thank you to everyone who voted for the Takanomi Rangers to be the next Destiny Law video. This video is for you. You'll be able to vote again with this video by clicking the poll card in the top right hand corner of the screen or by following me on Twitter. The link is in the description. Today's video will explore the legendary hunters known as the Takanomi Rangers, as well as the lore surrounding the hunter subclass, the Night Stalker. This is Mylan Games and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny lore video. The story of the Takanomi Rangers is told through hunter armor item descriptions. The Takanomi Rangers emerged following the collapse during the Dark Age. This was before the safety of the city and before the rise of the tower. Like the first Titans, the Takanomi Rangers protected the refugees as they migrated towards the Traveller. Some may argue that the Takanomi Rangers even predate the first Titans. Before the Titans built the first walls and defences of the city, the Rangers were there. They ventured into the wild armed with sniper rifles and camouflage cloaks, ushering the refugees and protecting the roads that led to the last remaining Earth city. The leader of the Takanomi Rangers was Ayani Takanomi. She was actually not a guardian, which made her role all the more perilous. As Chiyoko Mei says, you could not get far on one life alone, not in those days. This led many to believe that Ayani Takanomi was no more than a myth, as one life was not enough to survive the wilderness. Consequently, guardians would eventually absorb the role of the Takanomi Ranger and defend the first people of the city. That is all I could find on the Takanomi Rangers. They do not appear in the Grimoire cards, nor is there any information about Chiyoko Mei, who appears to narrate the Ranger story, or their leader, Ayani Takanomi. So let's move on to some lore surrounding the Night Stalker. This story is revealed through the Night Stalker Trail questline, which has us track down a missing Night Stalker and longtime friend of Cade 6, Tevis Larson. Whilst Tevis is referred to as a Ranger, I do not think he is a Takanomi Ranger. However, there is no reason that he could not be. Cade 6 explains how Tevis cheated in every game of dice they played and seems to be an old friend from his gambling days. Tevis may in fact be very old as he makes a joke about Cade 6's breath. Cade, good, I can't smell your breath. Listen, I stepped through the gate. My ghost is still on the other side. This has a loose implication that Tevis knew Cade when he was human, as I assume Exos don't have bad breath. Or maybe that was just a pun about Cade becoming an Exo and that he couldn't have bad breath. Regardless, it would be nice if it was true and he knew Cade when he was human. This would place the timeline for their relationship to be back when Cade met Maya Sundaresh and was experimenting on the Vex mind. This means Tevis would be very, very old, which I don't know how that would be possible for a human. Regardless, his wisdom and age is emphasized with other quest lines. For example, the Blade Dancer, Complete the Path mission, the Gunslinger, Complete the Path mission, and the Promethean Code mission. In the Blade Dancer quest line, Tevis says, Don't believe Cade. Half the things out of his mouth are lies, the other half are fibs. My favourite line of his? Oh, easy. He likes to say he stole the secret of stealth tech from Rasputin, and that's how Blade Dancers learned the trick. Ha! Tevis. The Gunslinger quest line says, Why is it golden? Well, let's see. What's the fundamental force we're dealing with here? Solar energy, right? Like from the sun? I swear, you kids come out of the tower greener and greener every year. Why is it gold? Feh. Tevis. The Promethean Code mission reads, Rasputin isn't an ally. You hear me, blood? You find yourself thinking that? You shut it down? He may not be against us, but he doesn't care if you live, if the city lives, if the traveller lives. 
Trust me, he told me himself. Tevis Larson. With Tevis's extensive knowledge of hunter subclasses, it is no wonder that he is a Night Stalker. Kate Six describes him as the most experienced Night Stalker, and that there aren't a lot of Night Stalkers in the field. We can't afford to lose his connection with the Void to the Vex. Tevis explains that he is able to summon a Dusk Bow because he has no fear. A ranger found mission reads, I've had a dozen hunters ask me why it's so hard to summon a dusk bow. I asked them what they thought of the void, and their eyes told me everything. You can't be afraid. That's the secret. No fear. Tevis. Log entry 19338. The Night Stalker's trail mission also explains how becoming a Night Stalker can twist your light. Picking it up is the easy part, Hunter. Putting it down again, well, you'll find that it's addictive. That power. This weapon is something special. Your light gets twisted. It appears that the Void contains a tremendous and dangerous amount of power. But what is the Void? Tolan's explanation is relatively clear. The Void is not the darkness. The darkness is what it is. Void energy is like all things this universe. It is light seen through a prism. A fundamental force, the vacuum between the stars, the absence of everything else. Just try explaining that to someone who has never walked the void. Tolan's journal. Yulin Tan reinforces that the void is a space between spaces and also explains it is just another form of light. If light connects across space and time, what is the void? What role does the vacuum, the absence, play? What stops the darkness from entering the space between the stars? Their answer is simple. The void is just another type of light. Yulin Tan. Interestingly, the Void features heavily in the Book of Sorrows. Savathun, Oryx's sister, strikes the Void with one long claw, and space-time groans beneath her touch. The Ecumene, an intergalactic organisation, destroyed by Oryx, also fled into the Void in verse 3.9, carved in ruin. This may also explain the Voidwalker Grimoire card that says, The Traveller came out of the Void, surrounds all things. When the Traveller fled Oryx, did the Traveller pass through the Void, exiting Oryx's universe and entering ours? Here is a summary of my interpretation of the Void. I previously used the metaphor to explain the veil, and I'll use it again. If we are sitting inside a house, the house represents our reality, our universe. The outside of the house is another universe whether it be a parallel universe, a hive netherworld, or something completely different. The curtain in front of the window is the veil, where certain individuals like the Queen and the future war cult subjects can pull back the curtains, pull back the veil, and see into other universes. Therefore, the void would have to be the window itself, or the walls of the house, it represents the space between universes, the nothing, the vacuum. However, somehow we have managed to pull power from nothingness and manipulate it to create void light. A core array reinforces this with reference to hunters making great improvements in their void manipulation and light manipulation. Staring into the void is not without consequence. And the most experienced Night Stalkers can tell you that. Doesn't matter how good you are. You stay out there for too long. You're not coming back. Not the same way you left anyway. Tevis. Tevis showed us how to be fearless. And with each draw of the bow, we pull power from the unknown. From the nothingness. Power from the void. That can match any Void Walker Warlock. Or any Defender Titan. I hope you've enjoyed this latest Destiny Law episode. 
If you would like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, leave the comment. Void Master Tevis. May he rest in peace. <laughs> Once again, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlon Games. Peace.